Thank you, Jacqueline. Feeling all hyped up now? Are you guys feeling hyped up? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, football is one of the most popular sports on earth. From old, young people, even kids uh, love to watch and play this game. No exception here in Indonesia. And to talk more about Football Academy for Children, we have this dynamic duo, Akash Nasani and Marco Gracia Paulo from Super Skills Jakarta. Super Skills Software Hi. Jakarta, yeah, basically. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are morning. you yeah. today? Good. Good. Fine. Any high stuff? Did you do your warming up exercise? Like playing some, kicking some ball or something? Oh, no, we were, uh, we were dancing for... Uh, you were dancing to DJ, 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 DJ Jacqueline's, Jacqueline's music. DJ song, yeah. right? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> you love your song. Okay, now tell us a bit about your, this um, Super Skills Soccer. Yeah, so Super Skills is the first uh, football school that teaches uh, expert uh, ball mastery where the game is one versus one. Right. So in this, in a, in a typical session, kids don't have any passing. So it's one kid and one ball, so they have that relationship with the ball, mm -hmm. is to build that foundation of ball mastery. Right. So when these kids play futsal or they play soccer for their school, mm -hmm. they're already technically gifted, where we try to replicate that number 10, like Maradona, Messi, Ronaldo, mm -hmm. that are our poster boys, mm -hmm. that sort of a player. Oh, right. So it's different from any other football team that usually has um, football clubs. That's right. Clubs the, that actually has the traditional How many people kind. together traditionally? Uh, like f for futsal or for, for football? You mean like 11 on 11? Oh, 11 on 11. Yeah, football, so yeah. that's for ah. football. For futsal, is 5 on 5. So mm -hmm. super skills is 1v1. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So these kids need to be well equipped to beat his men. So right. he has nobody to help. He's extremely exposed. So he needs to have his own ideas, his own technical ability mm -hmm. to go past the man and score a goal. All right. How did you come up with this? What inspired you to actually make this uh, team or club? Uh, because we, as especially for me while growing up, I always played this game of 1v1 with all my teammates that a lot of us, we were, we were dubbed as the golden generation back in Singapore and many of us turned professional players. S uh, some of my friends are even in the national team right now. Mm -hmm. But it was down to that type of total football where we wanted to create action with the ball instead of always just passing the ball and mm -hmm. thinking that after passing the ball the job is done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So um, is, is it only for children? This particular sport of one versus one is for everybody, boys, girls, amateur all the way up to professional mm -hmm. level. So right. everybody uses this kind of program where different 1v1 situations to build again the technical and dribbling skills of, of their players. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been with the super skills? You're well, basically in the, uh, he's the coach. Yeah, and you are so he's handling all the technical stuff mm -hmm. and I handle the business. Mm -hmm. And how is it with uh, super skill in terms of um, the response from you know, yeah, people in Jakarta or Indonesia? Do you well, have both? Uh, well, uh, we are focusing mainly in Jakarta now, mm -hmm. but we're gonna s soon we're going to uh, mm -hmm. really take all the, 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 the national uh, part, mm -hmm. but the rest one is really, really good because mm -hmm. we also do extracurricular program, program for the schools all right. and it, the rest one is really positive because what we do here, like just uh, Akas uh, mentioned, uh, we are not focusing on the skills also only, but we're focusing also on the character. All right. So the character building is very important. That's why when uh, you ask, is it only for children? Mm -hmm. No. but it will help children a lot to also build up the character. And the do they have to character. start from a really young age so to be able to, you know? Uh, it is always best to start at a young age because yeah. you're, still, you're still able to mold that mm -hmm. person where it comes to football, language, mm -hmm. whatever your education purpose uh, mm -hmm. of, of, a, of a child is e obviously easiest when they're really young. Mm -hmm. And how old is young though? Two? When they just started walking, three and three, a half. Yeah, three four. And a half. We get yeah, we yeah. get three and a half, four. But mm -hmm. again, for for kids to understand the concept of one versus one, he would have to have he would have to be slightly older. So the youngest we've had to play competitively one versus one is at the age of five and a half. And yeah. he was, I mean, he is a rare breed. And today he is on his way to Barcelona, Spain wow. to play for Marset Academy. And how old is he now? He's eight today. He's eight? He just, he just turned eight a couple of months ago and he's three weeks away from a scholarship there. Wow. So 
Well, I'm curious though, when you are such a, at such a young age, sometimes you don't even know what you want to do or what you like to do. So is, is it normally parents who actually push them or, you know, insist that they join a club or is it by them themselves that they, you know, they have a passion for football? Uh, it is it is a gamble for sure for the parents to take uh, to invest in, in in their child, but it's something that they want their child to, I mean, to be happy also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if your kid is uh, is good, I mean, he has the talent, why not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, again, I believe again like what Marco was saying, character building. Again, you move to a, a new place, a new city, you learn new things. Mm -hmm. So whether he turns into a professional footballer or not, exactly. it. There are other uh, life skills that you learn just mm -hmm. from this experience alone, so mm -hmm. I don't think anything's wasted. Yeah. Life experience or character building, can you tell me the correlation between football and character building? I mean, when you learn character yeah. building, we, we think about, you know, um, presentations in school or, yeah. you know, right now yeah. in international yeah. schools, you know, um, doing, um, um, what do you call that, problem solving, yeah. you know, things yeah. like that. But when it comes to football, how do yeah. you correlate That's why, that? actually, um, when I say character building, it's not uh, all the theoretical things you know that you learn right. in schools, presentations, and everything. But actually, it's a life experience. Okay. You know, it helps you to build. Why we go to school? Mm -hmm. Because we want to build, other than the knowledge that we get. But we also need mm -hmm. to to build our character because there are rules there. So it's all about football, actually. Right. So football is actually the liquid. It's very liquid that you can use it to do anything actually mm -hmm. and to learn anything mm -hmm. yeah, so basically we're not like Akash mentioned uh, no matter uh, 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 your child's gonna be professional or not yeah. but it's not about building the professional players mm -hmm. we have other levels for that okay. but this is about teaching your kids about uh, life about real life through football all right. Yeah, so that's the decision that the parents has to make, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now you also mentioned that you know if the kids have talent, then why not, right? Yeah. But how do you know if a child has the talent to play football or not? Is it by the way they kick, you know? Of course. I wouldn't know because even I'm a, I'm a lady, right? Yeah. <laughs> of course, it's uh, definitely very evident on the playing surface. Uh, mm -hmm. You compare, well, do I don't really like to compare players, but you can see that every game the consistency of him performing very well is mm -hmm. is pretty evident mm -hmm. and then his obsession yeah. i don't even passion. say passion anymore but his obsession passion. to to want to always be with the ball throughout the day is is present mm -hmm. and because of such habits it it reflects again on the playing surface and you know that that is what he wants to be when he grows up every time you ask a player so what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a footballer. And it shows off the court too that his habits, if continued this way, mm -hmm. it would be good for him. Mm, he have a career out of football as well. To be, yeah, exactly, to have a career in it. Uh -huh. Now, yeah. what are the physical requirements though if you want to be a football player or you want to join a football club? I don't think uh, physical requirements are, are, important. are, are important because <laughs> Again, you have Diego Maradona as the smallest player on the mm -hmm. pitch, but he was the best in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have Messi, who had who had physical problems growing up, where he had to be injected with steroids in Barcelona just to grow, mm -hmm. and he's the world's best. So again, it's it's uh, what you can do with the ball, really. So anybody can actually play football. Yeah, right? anybody. Exactly. Yeah, like uh, for basketball, you have to be you know of a certain height in order to be able to you know maybe shoot the ball or something like that. But in football, is agility important though? Do you have to be fast? Do you have to be well, like. Agility you know? is the most important thing. Right. And then sports. Super skills is what we we yeah. focus on agility. agility. All right. Extreme uh, quick uh, feet. That's mm -hmm. what we focus on. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now, what are the the fees perhaps if you have parents who want to join you know do you have to pay or is it yeah so the registration cost is 1 million uh, rupiah so this includes uh, the administration the jersey set and uh, t uh, your membership to play in our 1v1 tournaments that that are held twice mm -hmm. a year mm -hmm. so every 6 months all the dojos so all the centers of super mm -hmm. skills get together mm -hmm. and we rally off one versus one according to your age group mm -hmm. so this is only uh, valid for all members and then the monthly fee, like for us in North Jakarta, is 700,000 rupiah a month. Mm -hmm. And in, in South is uh, 800. 800,000. Yeah. Okay, now right now we're going to go for a break, but when we come back, we're going to continue talking about super skills and just football in Indonesia. We'll be right back.
Normally, lakes have fresh water, but Lake Labuan in Barao, East Kalimantan, is rather different. On the surface, the lake water is fresh, but just a few meters underneath, the water is salty. The salt water seeps from the sea tide not far from the lake. A thin layer of border lies between the salt and fresh water. The two kinds of water in the lake gather life from both worlds freshwater fish on top and saltwater fish on the bottom of the lake. Banging heads against each other has got to hurt, but in Bima, West Nusa Tenggara, a unique tradition does just that. It's called Entubu. This tradition is only performed by certain people in the Wawo district. These people either have had spells of strength conjured into them, or they are descendants of warriors from the Bima Sultanate. Around four to six people will hit their heads against each other alongside traditional Bima music and songs. The Entubu ritual, however, is performed a lot less than it used to. Auto and KJ. Welcome back. You're still with my with me and my guests, Akash and Marco. Right, Marco? Yeah. Right, okay. Now we're going to continue again. Now, a number of football schools in Indonesia are growing right now, okay? What's a good what what's a good school, a foot a good football school and what what can it offer? Well, this is the thing. In Indonesia, we because I was in the organization before, we don't really have it yet. I mean, the standard. So, what makes a good uh, soccer school or soccer institution is uh, the program for yes. sure. Like a restaurant, so the recipe of the of the food the program. that you serve, right? Mm -hmm. So, what kind of recipe that you make mm -hmm. to serve to you know, mm -hmm. to to your to your clients, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to the kids? That makes that makes a good program. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so what I believe that's the fundamental. So, what do you guys offer then for this um, football club? So skills. yeah, so what what again like what I was saying, it's about ball mastery and agility. Mm -hmm. That our our session uh, is planned based on these two criteria. Okay. So what's unique about this program is it's a progressive belt system. So it's mm -hmm. just like martial arts where you have white belt all the way up to black belt. Mm -hmm. So these kids when they come different different belts have different criteria to to fulfill and so different movements with the ball where we call it kata where it's a japanese word mm -hmm. for for the di like, just like taekwondo All and right. yeah so that's why our centers are called dojos too uh -huh. so different belts have different katas to to perform mm -hmm. according mm -hmm. obviously to the skill level which is the color of their belt All right. so a yellow belt would be doing something different than a white belt mm -hmm. and an orange belt would be doing something different too All right. but the core, the core session is every kid uh -huh. is is with a ball. 
it's it's never it's never risked uh, passing. Uh, it's never it's never released mm -hmm. to anybody. Mm -hmm. The only time that that you risk losing the ball is during the game of one versus one. But apart from that, the entire session of at least a hundred minutes mm -hmm. is complete ball mastery and agility with and without the ball. Mm -hmm. That's interesting, though. How did you come up with you know those Japanese terms like taekwondo? I mean, it is a football. You know, something yeah. Yeah. And Our I think founder you're probably actually one yeah. of the first to really actually have that yeah. sort of term, you know, it's yeah. out of the norm and yeah. out of the box, yeah. right? Yeah. And how, how did that come up with? Yeah, our founder Was actually... Was he a fan of Taekwondo or um, martial arts? So, our, <laughs> yeah, our founder, Dale Mulholland, he's an American who used to live in Indonesia and now back in the States. He used to do some uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. All right. And uh, he was always intrigued by how players were, I mean, uh, the fighters or you call them uh, martial artists, mm -hmm. They were very uh, dedicated, yeah. respectful to their teachers, and he wanted that same kind of concept in football. In football. Yeah. So is there so a correlation, though, between you know? Oh no, just and <laughs> no, no, just just the just progressive belt system. Okay, that's that's belt about system. it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, what are the important assets of a young football player? Obsession. Right? Obsession. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Obsession. Yeah. You it's have to be obsessed with football. Oh, of course. Yeah. I think in a, in anything in in the world that you want to do, you have to be obsessed mm -hmm. day in day out. There's no day off. So passion. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 more than passion. Mm -hmm. Even when you're sleeping, you're dreaming about mm -hmm. it. Dreaming playing in front of a thousand of a hundred thousand mm -hmm. fans, mm -hmm. scoring a goal. It's it's what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And that is that is the most crucial element for me, especially right. for kids of that age. Uh -huh. What age though? Kids of what age? In what age do they start having a passion and obsession for football? I had it when I was uh, six. Yeah. Wow, that's some, really young. Yeah. Some might have since they're born. Yeah. <laughs> since they're born. Yeah. You can, you can, you can yeah. feel it. How do you say? How do you tell though? They're you know always hogging onto the ball. They're always. I I the slept ball. with the ball. You slept with the yeah. ball. Yeah. All right, my son sleeps, sleeps with his toy cars. It's yeah. obsessed with cars that I'm <laughs> starting Could to you know, yeah. Maybe he's the next uh, F1 <laughs> for Indonesia. The next F1, amen yeah. to that. Now, can you name us some of the Indonesian young? Do we have a lot of Indonesian young yeah. talents who are you know, good in football. Yeah. Right? Can you perhaps name to us, give us some names? Yeah, uh, on top of my head right now would be Tristan Alis. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, he's, uh, I think, one of the... One of the, the yes. Tristan. Yeah, Tristan but... Ali, yeah. but, but after playing even uh, at under 21 level in Indonesia mm -hmm. many years ago, we we played against team from teams outside Jakarta mm -hmm. in uh, places that I've never even heard of. The talent, the talent in these kind of uh, where you call it the kampung, All right. is phenomenal. Like the talent in Indonesia is fantastic. It's just that we never had people to manage it right. Mm -hmm people to br to 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 have uh, to have like for instance uh, football schools or football organizations mm -hmm. there to help nurture this young talent yeah. Yeah. again into again as a feeder feeder clubs mm -hmm. to bring in for the national team mm -hmm. and we are still a long way apart mm -hmm. sadly but in terms of talent we have we we could be one of the best in asia right yeah. now okay. yes i believe i believe we have a lot of talents but we just haven't found them yet, and why? Because we we haven't had we haven't set up the standard, you know, right. to to have that. You know, that's uh, why that's yeah. what we wanna have with our small portion that we mm -hmm. can do, but we wanna do it, mm -hmm. you know, all the way. All right. So, would you consider that Indonesian football scene is actually pretty um, underdeveloped, or oh would you yes. say it's developed, or is it still catching up? It's, it's it's always playing catching up yeah. uh, with with everybody, mm -hmm. but it's the a matter of how how long. You've you've left behind, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Is the government doing anything right now to support the football? I believe so, but uh, I believe also we need to sit down all the stakeholders, and they really need to hear from, you know, from us, for instance. Mm -hmm. Of maybe lots of people wants to do things, right? But too many hands won't be so good, also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they need to make up their minds, and you know, okay, this is what we're gonna do, and we're gonna do it you know, fully committed, you know, and everybody has to support this. No. And we will. Now we're going to get to b a bit serious question, you know, how's Indonesian football, like the condition is amid all the scandal and the PSSI yeah. thing, and what's the future of football like here in Indonesia, for the younger generation, of course? Uh, I think, I think the younger generation are all getting hurt right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with, with, with no professional league running at the moment, mm -hmm. obviously the funds are less, 
if at the top the funds are less, it doesn't again go all the way down, and this will hurt all the youth uh, mm -hmm. academies. And again, players growing up, parents would want to mm -hmm. watch out for their kids. Mm -hmm. That the traditional mindset where you should not be a football player, you should do something, go to go to school, get a degree, mm -hmm. work for for a major organization. Mm -hmm. So you you are actually taking out a lot of the potential and what what could be away from from the what could what could have yeah. been yeah, what yeah. Could have yeah. Been, yeah now what ab what about Indonesia's football position in the region uh, or in Asian football league is there such thing Asian football league there is right yeah uh, there is there where is. where is Indonesia placed right now though? we're not really good okay right now but I believe uh, if we start because uh, I believe we had a congress for the PSSI uh, uh, back, uh, I think last week, last two weeks, and we're going to have the election of the uh, uh, president for our PSSI on October 17, if I'm mistaken. So it's it's hopeful, but again, we really need to take action. Otherwise, we will be left behind. It's not about we're dropping. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're growing, but but it's not, not as big as everybody it's else. Not, yeah, like again, Vietnam, Philippines, you know. Because these uh, like countries like Thailand, Vietnam, even uh, even Singapore, who have problems uh, with their league, but they have a league and they're playing week in and week out. Yeah. And it's important for the players to be playing at, at the highest uh, highest league in in their country, mm -hmm. so that when they actually have the national team traveling for all these major tournaments, that the players are always consistently playing at that level yeah. and yeah. it's it's a problem for Indonesia right now because mm -hmm. we don't we don't have that yeah. and even to to have whatever tournaments that's running and mm -hmm. you don't really have a proper pool of players to mm -hmm. again have your best 11 to represent the country mm -hmm. so what's the future like then of football in Indonesia right now it's hopeful yeah it's, it's hopeful. hopeful it is hopeful yeah. but very difficult to predict yeah. uh, Again, it all depends on the outcome of of the elections, mm. and again, after the elections, what are the programs yeah. mm -hmm. that will be put mm -hmm. for for everybody? So everything all depends uh, in the next uh, couple of months. Well, guys, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the future of football. We need luck that. to the younger generations. I'm pretty sure football we will be, you know, on par with all our neighboring countries, and probably, you know, be the best. Hopefully. Okay. Yeah? Hopefully. Because as long as you nurture all the younger generations, yeah. Yeah. You know, man yeah. team, which you have right now. Okay. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining us today on Daybreak. Thank now, you. coming up from the field, we go to the beach to join kids in Sumbawa, West Nusa Tenggara, who enjoy riding the waves. We'll check out the trend in Sumbawa. Oh, really? Welcome back. You're still with my, with me and my guests, Akash and Marco. Right, Marco? Yeah. Right, okay. Now we're going to continue again. Now, a number of football schools in Indonesia are growing right now, okay? What's a good, what, what's a good school, a, foot, a good football school, and what, what can it offer? Well, this is the thing. In Indonesia, we, because I was in the organization before, we don't really have it yet, I mean, the standard. So what makes a good uh, soccer school or soccer institution is uh, the program for yes. sure like a restaurant so the recipe of the of the food the program that you serve right mm -hmm. so what kind of recipe that you make mm -hmm. to serve to mm -hmm. to to your to your clients mm -hmm. you know uh, to the kids that makes that makes a good program mm -hmm. all right so, so what i believe that's the fundamental so what do you guys offer then for this um football club so oh, super skills. yeah so what what again like what i was saying it's about ball mastery and agility mm -hmm. that our our session uh, is planned based on these two criteria okay. so what's unique about this program is it's a progressive belt system so it's mm -hmm. just like martial arts where you have white belt all the way up to black belt mm -hmm. so these kids when they come 
different different belts have different criteria to to fulfill and so different movements with the ball where we call it kata where it's a japanese word mm -hmm. for for the like, just like taekwondo All and right. yeah so that's why our centers are called dojos too uh -huh. so different belts have different katas to to perform mm -hmm. according mm -hmm. obviously to their skill level which is the color of their belt All right. so a yellow belt would be doing something different than a white belt mm -hmm. and an orange belt would be doing something different too All right. but the core the core session is every kid uh -huh. is is with a ball it's mm -hmm. it's never it's never risked uh, passing uh, it's never it's never released mm -hmm. to anybody mm -hmm. the only time that that you risk losing the ball is during the game of one versus one but apart from that the entire session of at least a hundred minutes mm -hmm. is complete ball mastery and agility with and without the ball. Mm -hmm. That's interesting though, how did you come up with you know those Japanese terms like Taekwondo? I mean it is a football, you know, something yeah. Yeah. And Our I think founder you're probably actually one yeah. of the first to actually it. have that yeah. sort of term. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. out of the norm and yeah. out of the box, yeah. right? Yeah. And how, how did that come up with? Yeah, our founder Was actually... Was he a fan of Taekwondo or um, martial arts? So, <laughs> our, yeah, our founder, Dale Mulholland, he's an American who used to live in Indonesia and now back in the States. He used to do some uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. All right. And uh, he was always intrigued by how players were, I mean, uh, the fighters or you call them uh, martial artists, mm -hmm. they were very... Uh, dedicated, yeah. respectful to the teachers, and he wanted that same kind of concept in football. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is there so a correlation though between, you know, Oh no, just and <laughs> no, no, just just the just progressive belt system. Okay, that's that's belt about system. it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What what are the important assets of a young football player? Obsession. Like? Obsession. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Obsession. Yeah. You it's have to be obsessed with football. Oh, of course. Yeah. I think in a, in anything in in the world that you want to do, you have to be obsessed mm -hmm. day in day out. There's no day off. So passion. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 more than passion. Mm -hmm. Even when you're sleeping, you're dreaming about mm -hmm. it. Dreaming playing in front of a thousand of a hundred thousand mm -hmm. fans, mm -hmm. scoring a goal. It's it's what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And that is that is the most crucial element for me, especially right. for kids of that age. Uh -huh. What age though? Kids of what age? In what age do they start having a passion and obsession for football? I had it when I was uh, six. Yeah. Wow, that's some, really young. Yeah. Some might have since they're born. Yeah. <laughs> since they're born. Yeah. You can, you can, you can yeah. feel it. How do you say? How do you tell though? They're you know always hogging onto the ball. They're always. I I the slept ball. with the ball. You slept with the yeah. ball. Yeah. All right, my son sleeps, sleeps with his toy cars. It's yeah. not just with cars that I'm <laughs> starting Could to you know, yeah. wonder. Maybe he's the next uh, F1 <laughs> for Indonesia. The next F1, amen yeah. to that. Now, can you name us some of the Indonesian young? We have a lot of Indonesian young yeah. talents who are you know, good in football. Yeah. Can you perhaps name to us, give us some names? Yeah, uh, on top of my head right now would be Tristan Alis. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, he's, uh, I think, one of the... One of the yes. Tristan. Yeah, Tristan but... Ali, yeah. but after playing even uh, at under 21 level in Indonesia mm -hmm. many years ago, we we played against team from teams outside Jakarta mm -hmm. in uh, places that I've never even heard of. The talent, the talent in these kind of uh, where you call it the kampung, All right. is phenomenal. Like the talent in Indonesia is fantastic. It's just that we <laughs> never had people to manage it right. Mm -hmm people to br to 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 have uh, to have like for instance uh, football schools or football organizations mm -hmm. there to help nurture this young talent yeah. Yeah. again into again as a feeder feeder clubs mm -hmm. to bring in for the national team mm -hmm. and we are still a long way apart mm -hmm. sadly but in terms of talent we have we we could be one of the best in asia right yeah. now okay. yes i uh, believe i believe we have a lot of talents but we just haven't found them yet, and why? Because we we haven't had we haven't set up the standard, you know, right. to to have that. You know, that's uh -huh. why that's what we wanna have with our small portion that we mm -hmm. can do, but we wanna do it, mm -hmm. you know, all the way. All right. So, would you consider that Indonesian football scene is actually pretty um, underdeveloped, or oh would you yes. say it's developed, or is it still catching up? It's, it's it's always playing catching up yeah. uh, with with everybody, mm -hmm. but it's the a matter of how how long. You've you've left behind, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Is the government doing anything right now to support the football? I believe so, but uh, I believe also we need to sit down all the stakeholders, and they really need to hear from, you know, from us, for instance. Mm -hmm. Of maybe lots of people wants to do things, right? But too many hands won't be 
so good also. Yeah. Yeah. So they need to make up their minds and you know, okay, this is what we're gonna do, and we're gonna do it, you know, fully committed. You know, and everybody has to support this, now and we will. Now we're gonna get to a bit serious question. You know, how's Indonesian football like the condition it amid all the scandal and the PSI yeah. thing, and what's the future of football like here in Indonesia for the younger generation? Of course. Uh, I think I think the younger generation are all getting hurt right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with 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 no professional league running at the moment, mm -hmm. obviously the funds are less. If at the top the funds are less, it doesn't again go all the way down, and this will hurt all the youth uh, mm -hmm. academies. And again, players growing up, parents would want to mm -hmm. watch out for their kids. Mm -hmm. That the traditional mindset where you should not be a football player, you should do something, go to go to school, get a degree work for for a major organization mm -hmm. so you you are actually taking out a lot of the potential and what what could be away from from their what could what could have yeah. been yeah what yeah. could have yeah. been yeah now what ab what about indonesia's football position in the region uh, or in asian football league is there such thing asian football league there is right yeah uh, there is there where is. where is indonesia placed right now though? we're not really good okay right now but i believe uh if we start, because uh, I believe we had a congress for the PSSI uh, uh, back, uh, I think last week, last two weeks, and we're going to have the election of the uh, uh, president for our PSSI on October 17, if I'm not mistaken. So it's it's hopeful, but again, we really need to take action. Otherwise, we will be left behind. It's not about we're dropping; mm -hmm. maybe we're growing. But, but it's not, not as big as everybody it's else. Not, yeah, like Again, Vietnam, Philippines, you know. Because these uh, like countries like Thailand, Vietnam, even uh, even Singapore, who have problems uh, with their league, but they have a league and they're playing week in and week out. Yeah. And it's important for the players to be playing at, at the highest uh, highest league in in their country, mm -hmm. so that when they actually have the national team traveling for all these major tournaments, that the players are always consistently playing at that level yeah. and yeah. it's it's a problem for Indonesia right now because mm -hmm. we don't we don't have that yeah. and even to to have whatever tournaments that's running and mm -hmm. you don't really have a proper pool of players to mm -hmm. again have your best 11 to represent the country mm -hmm. so what's the future like then of football in Indonesia right now it's hopeful yeah it's, it's hopeful. hopeful it is hopeful yeah. but very difficult to predict yeah. uh, Again, it all depends on the outcome of of the elections, mm. and again, after the elections, what are the programs yeah. mm -hmm. that will be put mm -hmm. for for everybody? So everything all depends uh, in the next uh, couple of months. Well, guys, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> sure, of football. We need luck that. to the younger generations. I'm pretty sure football. We will be, you know, on par with all our neighboring countries, and probably, you know, be the best. Hopefully. Okay. Yeah? Hopefully. Just as long as you and nurture all the younger generations yeah. and yeah. no man team yeah. which you have right now. Okay. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining us today on Daybreak. Thank now, you. coming up from the field, we go to the beach to join kids in Sumbawa, West Nusa Tenggara, who enjoy riding the waves. We'll check out the trend in Sumbawa. Oh, really?